for your kind information okay and then uh, as a atul fdp as a formal introduction to the resource person we will be doing the introduction about you sir and then the forum will be given to you sir okay okay Good. so we are going to start this is my slides is visible sir uh, just a minute sir we are having some uh, guest speaker sir, introduction sir then i yeah. will stop screening sir okay right 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 thank you okay uh, very good afternoon to the chief guest and all the participants on behalf of sarnathan college of engineering management our beloved principal head of department of ece fdp convener dr v mohan fdp coordinators mr v kaushik and mr sd sairam sir it is a pleasure for me to welcome you for this uh, five days act training and learning atal academy fdp on cognitive radio antennas and millimeter wave communication the session is uh, supposed to be fourth day third session is uh, started and uh, our guest speaker is supposed to be dr, dr. prakash rao sir on uh, welcome on introduction introduction to the guest speaker by our beloved professor dr m barita begum Ma'am, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. A very good afternoon, uh, one and all present here. I take great privilege in introducing our session chief guest, Dr. Amara Prakash Rao, Associate Professor, ECE Department, NIT, Warangal. Sir received his B degree in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Naharjuna University, AP. Sir received his M Tech degree from PEC, Pondicherry. Sir awarded PhD in the area of smart antenna system from NIT Warangal. Currently, he is working as associate professor EC department in NIT Warangal. Sir has a life membership in Indian Society of Technical Education. Sir specialization includes smart antenna system optimization techniques and signal sense system. Sir has published more than fifty papers in various journals and conferences. It is. our pleasure to have you here as our session chief guest thank you for accepting our invitation to deliver address in your busy schedule we are really honored to have you here as our speaker for the session thank you thank you sir thank you thank you ma'am sir we are eagerly waiting for your knowledge sharing sir now the session okay. is handed over to you sir okay ma'am thank you thank you thank you sir. good afternoon to all Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Now you can share your slides, sir. Is it not yet visible? Not visible? No, sir. Yes, sir. Still not yet visible, sir. Okay, I'll check it. I will check it. Oh, it is a problem. Can we? You have to give the rights to me. Screen sharing. Excuse yes, me? sir. We give the rights to you, sir. You can share it now, sir. Oh, but it is there is option. Can you guide me? In the bottom, it is not showing anything. Can you guide me? Where it is? Once again. Sir, it is nearer to the right. Uh, raise your hand option, sir. There is raise a uh, icon. Yeah. upper yeah. arrow mark is is there good yeah. and you just press and i uh, enter a screen right yes sir yes, sir present your screen sir select window screen uh, and there screen hello how oh, it is coming yes, sir are you getting uh, i will be No sir, not that. But uh, that may be in uh, process, sir. Have you clicked on that, sir? Yeah, I have. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, now sir. it is visible, sir. Just a minute, sir. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The screen now is visible, visible now, sir. Visible? Yes, yes sir. sir. It is visible, sir. Uh, I'll go to the PPT. Now, please read out the title. 
please read out sir your voice is breaking sir please see the my slides no sir uh, we couldn't see anything uh, on the screen sir but the slides uh, the screen is visible oh okay but uh, there is, is no information no sir there is no uh, information in that screen sir why it is a minute one second i will try Now you have stopped your presentation, sir. Yeah, once again, I'm going to enable. Okay, sir. Here, two options are there. Your entire screen, your window. Which one I have to press? Your en entire screen, you can press it, sir. Your entire screen, then. Okay, good. Then in that, it is asking, select window or screen. You have to select, sir. Uh, so, uh, then in that which one I have to select entire screen again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. It is coming. Have you selected this? Yeah, I have uh, selected. Okay, sir. But uh, so far, uh, it is yes, sir. Now it is uh, coming as presenting, sir. Presenting. Okay. Yes, sir. But you have to select the PPT which you want to present it, sir. Yeah, PPT I have to select. The PPT which, uh, yes, which uh, PPT which you want to show it. Uh, minimize this screen and I'll go. Now are you getting? No, sir. My PPT is, PPT is not visible? No, sir. Your presentation mode itself has uh, gone, sir. Why it is a problem? Is Previously, it was in the presentation mode, sir. Now it has gone, sir. See, from here, how to get it? I didn't... Uh... Mr. Kaushik, sir, can you please? Uh, guide? Yes, madam. I, yes, ma'am. Just a minute, madam. I will make a call. Tomorrow. Just a minute. Ma what is the missus? Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Kaushik, sir, will come and uh, he'll be helping okay. you, sir, to how to okay. make it. Dear participants, wait for a few minutes. Sir is going to give us the to topic on uh, optimization techniques in antenna system. I know how uh, very much uh, difficult the optimization technique because if you are if you are making it uh, one thing, the other parameter would have been uh, increasing. So we are supposed to balance both the things, and uh, all these things sh should uh, bring out a very good information. Uh, suppose like uh, if you want to have the radiation pattern 
the other one the reflection must be minimized and the written loss that should be there uh, that should be minimized but when we are going to have it the gain would have been minimized so when you are going to have to balance these two things there is some techniques that we have to make it so in so many places we are in need of this kind of optimization and uh, some of you people would have started your uh, uh, project or your research work on this optimization or people who have got the doctorate degrees their uh, research scholars would have been started about the optimization even now in the pandemic situation we want to say stay safe so that's why we people are living at home only and uh, because of we are living at home we couldn't go for any kind of walking and we are not doing some kind of exercise so that is something called as a trade off so if you want to be very safe the other way unhealthy only but if you are going out yes of course you are healthy uh, the body exercise everything will come but uh, the infection is also going to be there so it is one kind of unsafe situation how to balance these things that is also the uh, real practical difficulty what we are facing it right now so in that way even in the day to day life we are facing so many issues so in that way the optimization is supposed to be a very big thing and we are supposed to see about or learn about these techniques always so let us uh, we'll be waiting eagerly to get the practical aspects of optimization and i hope in the second session of today's session also it is a virtual tour you would have seen so many antennas uh, giving about the radiation pattern and the new type and uh, in which way these antennas are going to be helpful for us regarding the application point of view all those things sir has wonderfully given about the design aspects in a practical manner so these kind of five days fdps are giving about the practical consideration in that way uh, these kind of hotel ftps are giving us a very big platform to learn the new things which is coming around and uh, these uh, nit iit professors are coming to us and they are sparing their valuable time with us to share their knowledge really we must be very thankful to them uh, because of that only we could learn what is happening in and around but if we are going to attend the fdp we may be it is equivalent to as though we can read so many research papers within that three hours so in that way we are getting much knowledge even sir has quoted from which book balani all those things which book he has taken as a scientist always uh, people will be giving the source from which place they have taken it everything and apart from that uh what is the practical thing what they are using it even that is also going to be used so in that way okay so optimization is always required so please tune to uh, the call fdp sir will be coming and he will be connecting within short time dear participants kindly hold on for few minutes there is a small technical glitches it will rectify soon please kindly hold on and be patient thank you How are you are getting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can you it read the title? It is simple. Optimi yes. Optimization, optimization technique. Right, right. 
right now i'll start my presentation yes sir thank you sir thank you sir good good uh, sorry for the problem and technical issue A very good on to all i'm very happy to see you through online is a good response is so during this uh, period and the top time also you are interested uh, to learn something through online for that i am very happy i am going to start the my section so all the two hours try to bear me bear with me and you are going to learn some points and importance and significance and applications how to use of optimization techniques in a different fields so at the end of the presentation if you are happy with this presentation or you learn this small delta then i am happy and if you are going to put a question back to yourself after the section and you are going to get nothing response from that then there is no meaning of conducting such classes so try to bear and be positive and try to learn something from these two hours optimization techniques is a well known term optimization a daily we are using with and without these concepts we are going to complete our tasks we don't know whether we are used or not a few of them are going to recognize we are applied and we are completed the task and some of them they don't know but they are going to use the optimization techniques in their day to day life the first level of optimization technique they are going to use and they are going to complete the jobs so whenever you are going to buy something from the market we are going to use these techniques but we don't know whether we are applied or not to complete the job successfully in a better way and easily these optimization techniques are are helpful to handle the problem easily these optimization techniques are going to be used in n number of fields in n number of areas now we are going to see the optimization techniques how to be, going to be used in uh, antenna sections so before going to that i'll motivate then we'll see the introduction and so on my presentation will follows like this motivation introduction organization of the topics other than 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 lms ga de taguchi doa pso tlb and so on and finally conclusions and references optimization technique is a tool you can see the applications of this in n number of sectors not only ec in mechanical civil electrical chemical not only the engineering sector non engineering sectors also people are using so we can apply these techniques in n number of areas so we have to address very clearly to the boy this tool is not only for only in ec it can be applied in n number of fields first if you know you should know that what do you mean by optimization how to develop the steps and for that we should know the problem very clearly if you know the problem clearly if you understand the problem clearly and the problem will itself will give you the solution then it is easy to develop the algorithm to try to understand 
I'm going to give clearly once again. Before going to apply these optimization techniques, one has to know clearly the subject. Once you know the subject very clearly, once you know the problem very clearly, and your problem will give you almost 70-80% uh, solution for that problem. And with that, we can develop the algorithm easily. Then the rest of the things are very simple. Without understanding the problem clearly, if you straight away if you apply the algorithm, it is not at all possible. You can't get the optimal results. As a before going to technically, I will give you the brief simple example. And say you want to buy something from the market. You should know clearly where to buy, when to buy, how much you want to spend, and all these things. Then you have to plan and you have to do systematically. Without that, simply if you go to the market and without money and all, then you will be the trouble. You have the money, but there is no time. Again, is a problem. So you have to handle the, all these parameters. So when you are going to execute these parameters systematically and properly, then the problem is going to be solved easily. Without that, simply if you go to the market, then it is very difficult to complete the task. So you should know clearly where to buy, when to buy, how much, everything, budget and everything. And you have to handle properly. Then you can solve the problem easily. Similarly here also, you should know the problem very clearly. Once the problem is clear, then the problem itself will give the solution. Once you got the solution, then there is no problem at all. There is no problem at all. One is going, if you are going to say that problem is existing means, and you are not studied the subject thoroughly. You have not studied the subject thoroughly. Once you study the subject thoroughly, and that uh, subject will help you how to solve that problem, how to solve the problem. So try to understand that. The reason is why I'm telling twice, thrice means, in coming slides, we are going to see the cost function. How to develop that cost function is very important, very important step. And to develop that, we need to understand the subject. Once you understand the subject, and that will help you to solve the, your problem easily. Okay, so we are going to see the motivation introduction and all these things, topics. Then we have different antennas here, you can see on the top uh, left corner, dipole antenna, at the bottom, we have a group of elements systematically disconnected for mobile communication purpose. And uh, the bottom right corner, few structure antennas are connected in a, uh, in a series fashion to study the space and all. Based on the application, you are going to select it. Here we have the tower. It is meant for uh, mobile communication purpose. So based on the application, you have to select and you have to use that. Simply selection is not only enough. You have to handle the properly the weights and all. How to adjust these weights and all. Those things we are going to see now. Then you can see here, the top left corner, the signal is radiated in all the directions, 360 degrees. So for example, you want to use, uh, you want to radiate the signal in all the direction, example, all India radio. Then we, type, we need this type of antennas. But you want to focus in a particular direction, a particular sector you want to cover then we need a directional antennas. So based on the problem, you have to select it. Whether you want to radiate in all the directions or you want to focus in a particular direction. And not only that a particular direction, sometimes you will get the unwanted signals in the different directions. We need to suppress. So how to suppress that? How to handle? All these things we are going to see. So here you can see, the top right corner, the maximum signal is, is focused in the desired direction and 
in unwanted direction, we are going to place the null. So that uh, signal to noise ratio is going to be improved. So interference can be minimized to some extent. That is that is decides it depends on the how depth you are going to place the null in that uh, direction. So those are the things we, we are going to see. So before going to that, we have the beamformers and omnidirectional antennas. We have to see the comparisons, why you are going for the beamformers. We'll get the high gain. And with the help of that high gain, the coverage area is going to be increases tremendously. We can improve easily. So whenever you are going to focus the energy completely in one particular direction, then the coverage is area is going to be increases. And that leads to uh, less number of antennas are required for the system. Then how to reduce the interference? It's very simple. You have to reduce the side loops. You have to cancel if possible. And simultaneously you have to place the nulls wherever you need. So if you have control on side loops and null placement, then interference can be minimized or you can reduce that. And that leads to improve the SNR and further channel capacity is going to be improved. So when you refer the communication systems, C is equal to B log one plus S by N. So that once S by N is improved, then your channel capacity is also going to be improved. It depends on so many other parameters. One of these parameters is like So if you are able to improve the SNR with the help of interference, when you reduce the interference, we can improve the SNR and further the capacity is going to be affected. And not only that, we can see energy saving that is possible uh, directional sending. Then we, have, we can uh, use the frequency reuse concept. We can increase the frequency reuse with the help of uh, n-fold diversity gain curve. And this will, this will help you SDMA. Normally we have the uh, multiple access techniques, frequency division, time division, then CDMA, TDMA, CDMA, and FDMA. Whenever you are going through the satellite communication, these uh, multiple axes are very familiar. Now we are going to concentrate a spatial domain, a space domain, especially in a mobile communication and radar applications. We are going to use this uh, SDMA. So this is possible with the help of n-fold diversity gain. We can improve the uh, system capacity with the help of SDMA. And other one is multiple, multipath mitigation. So with this, uh, not only in a mobile communication, we can also see these uh, concepts in uh, radar applications also. We'll get the uh, how to mitigate this multipath effect and all you can see that and further you can see that delay spread control is possible and finally uh, the signal is going to be improved the quality of the signal is going to be increases you may get doubt what, what do you mean by quality of the signal the qos so you may be offered uh, some blood dose to your friend or your brother or some on, on occasion you are offered fine on the birth occasion you offered some blood dose to your friend but it is not at all eatable. The quality is not good. Then you will throw into the dustbin. Instead of giving many laddus to him, if you offered a quality laddu one, and the, your friend will appreciate you, and will be both we are both are going to be enjoyed. So the quality is important, not the uh, number quantity. So the quality. So when you are giving the signal. The signal should be a good condition. It should be strong. So when I'm talking with you, many are joined, then noise will be dominating. Is it useless? You got the signal, but a lot of interference is there. So the quality of the signal is very poor. So you have to provide a good quality signal, good quality signal, good strength. So that is possible when you mitigate this thing. Then MIMO, multiple inputs, multiple outputs. So there we are going to use this, this beamforming concepts and all. And further, we can see that uh, we can improve the angle of arrival. 
estimation. So you can uh, estimate in which direction the signal is coming more appropriately with the help of beamformers. So using the spot and the concepts, uh, we can improve the uh, angle of arrival estimation for the uh, dynamic, uh, the direction finding. So people are using this uh, uh, geolocation services. And so we can enhance the uh, geolocation services with the help of uh, uh, improved uh, angle of arrival estimation in which direction is coming is it enough? and you can uh, examine and you can predict it and accordingly you can do that so these are the uh, uh, merits uh, when you are going to compare with the uh, omnidirectional antennas so high gain side lobe cancellation and di directional sending information and pole directivity gain multipath mitigation and uh, angle of arrival and all so finally you can get the good coverage, quality of the signal, high bandwidth and capacity, interference can be minimized and so on. Then, you have to see that uh, why you are going for uh, these concepts in uh, uh, 5G and beyond 5G, 6G communication and all. Now people are, now we are comfortable means because of uh, uh, this 4G and uh, 5G only. If you go back the decades back, maybe 30, 30 years, 40 years back, whenever you want to make a call, when I was a student, uh, B-Tech student, uh, whenever I want to talk to my parents, I have to go to the telephone booth and I have to stand there and uh, I have to register my call. And when the slot comes, and operator will say, sorry, sir, today lines are not working. Just now it is gone. We don't know when we'll get the connection and all. Again, we have to go back to the hostel. Again, next day you have to come back. Again, you have to stand in the queue. And it's a very, very uh, big process. And from that, you'll get irritation. One, one side, you want to talk to your parents. The other side, the system is not going to be cooperating. The technology is not going to be cooperating. But today, in the fraction of seconds, whenever you are either good mode or a sad mode, you can share the your feelings to your neighbors, your friends, your teachers, and uh, your family members in a fraction of seconds because of uh, 4G and 5 Because of 4G and 5 See, we have so many features. Voice communication, data communication, test communication, video, audio, ma many features, internet facilities, and other things and all. This is possible with the, but how to use, that is very important. That is another th aspect. So we are going to use this uh, uh, techniques, uh, beamforming techniques in uh, 5G and beyond uh, 5G communications also. The speed, we can get up to 10 gigabits per second for data rate. The capacity, we can get a uh, use capacity and security and privacy. Low latency is in the order of milliseconds. Because of this only, uh, now we have people are uh, uh, driverless cars are coming into the uh, on the roads. So this driverless cars will demand low latency because uh, the system has to take the decision in a fraction of second, fraction of second, less than one millisecond. Because uh, opposite what is coming and they have to estimate and uh, accordingly it has to take. Maybe take right or left or forward or uh, increase or decrease the speed and all. So the you need a high, uh, what you call, uh, processing speeds as a, as a processing systems, high processors. At the same time, uh, your algorithm should uh, adapt this. It has to do that. So the latency is uh, in the order of milliseconds. With that, it is possible. Then quality of the signal, the bandwidth, thousand times you can get it. And especially IoT in applications, the battery life will be extended. Without these concepts, we need to uh, recharge quickly, uh, frequently, or you have to replace the dry cells uh, with the new one and all these things. But with the help of this beamforming, uh, battery life can be extended. The coverage area, you can get it up to 100%. So then these are the uh, reasons why we are going for the uh, 5G and uh, beyond 5G. These are the uh, some features. The applications. 
uh, travel escorts, health care, robotics, and industrial things. And where we are going to use these concepts? Then we'll get the extraordinary data capabilities. Then high speed connectivity. Now, how to achieve these things? Classical methods, evolutionary techniques, hybridization. Classical methods, evolutionary techniques, hybridization. Now we have the list of uh, optimization techniques, heuristic algorithms. So many things are there. It is not possible to list out all these things. You go through the literature and we'll get end. Just I'm going to motivate. I'm going to make you awareness that all I'm doing. See, one day it is not possible to learn everything. Normally, this optimization techniques we are going to take uh, around uh, 50 classes uh, to uh, educate the students in, in MTech level. Around 50 classes are required for UZ also, UZ PZ. But it is not possible to uh, make everything. But I will try to make you to uh, awareness. Okay, we have a good uh, tool is there and you can do the, some research and all. You, you can see these optimization techniques in the uh, EC field, in a signal system toolbox, in the MATLAB. You can see that. Or in a uh, uh, antenna uh, toolboxes, uh, uh, IE3D and all these things, uh, and soft and all. There we have the optimization tool. Uh, you can select it, either GE or PSOR and all these things. Then uh, when you give the uh, parameters, immediately you'll get this radiation pattern and so on and so on. I go to the mechanical and you can uh, apply these concepts in uh, their toolbar. In the civil, structural designs and all, people are going to use this optimization. And uh, not only that, uh, optimization is used in an electrical, uh, uh, electrical field, uh, power distribution, uh, how to handle the power allocation and all. So, uh, especially in the summer, they are going to uh, and uh, they have to handle properly. So they have to uh, estimate it in which area it is a uh, lot of demand is there and how to allocate the power to them. So before that, uh, they have to study the subject and uh, to solve the problem. Once they, they understand the problem, then uh, with the help of this optimization, we can um, distribute the power in a better manner. Normally they are going to see, uh, okay, this area is demands more, that area is less. Uh, and accordingly, they are going to do that. But instead of rough calculations, and if you understand the subject thoroughly, and we using this optimization technique, we can give the um, better signal to the uh, public. So not only that, uh, in a uh, mobile communication, uh, band allocation, uh, frequency band allocations, some bands are fixed, some bands are uh, dynamic, based on the profit they are going to uh, they are going to handle. So. Uh, if we have the subject very clearly, how it is varies and when it is demand will come and which, which time, which area, all these things. That is why in the beginning I said, before going to apply this optimization technique, we should know the subject thoroughly, clearly. So once you have the subject clearly, then you can you, you have a rights to use the optimization technique. Then how to allocate the band, how to resolve the profit. So once you know that and you, with the help of the optimization technique, we can uh, uh, allocate the band uh, dynamically. We can solve the problem. Okay, so, so like that, n number of applications are there in engineering and non-engineering sectors. So when you go through the literature, uh, these are the uh, familiar uh, algorithms. Most of the times, uh, we can get n number of papers on this. We have n number of. Uh, it is not possible to list out all these things in the on this slide. So once you have the interest, you go through the literature and you'll get the N number of Just I'm going to list out here. J algorithm, Taguchi, then uh, uh, Cuckoo's search, raindrop algorithm, genetic algorithm, ant algorithm, bat algorithm, fish algorithm. Uh, then you can see that it teaches learning based algorithm, then butterfly algorithm, monkeys algorithm, uh, then uh, uh, artificial bee uh, algorithm, uh, like this, uh, particle swarm optimization, uh, differential evolution, uh, then uh, bacterial for the algorithm, a uh, hill climbing algorithm, uh, mimetic algorithm. So like this, we have the N number. Parameterless population uh, pyramid algorithm, uh, marine uh, algorithm. So we have N number of algorithms. N number of uh, algorithms. 
at least uh, after dozen you have to select and study then you will get the knowledge and you can apply in your problem also but it is very difficult to say this algorithm is for this application uh, once you have a knowledge and from based on that you can decide you can go ahead but uh, sometimes people will say use this algorithm for this application that is not good that is a spoon feeding we can't say that uh, only this algorithm for only for that application this algorithm can be applied in n number of uh, sectors sometimes it is not possible to apply so you should know the clearly the problem and you should know the structure of the algorithm and with the help of that you can uh, whether you can apply or not you can know that so better you have to go through at least four five algorithms from that uh, uh, exercise uh, you can know that how to handle these algorithms uh, how to use whether this algorithm is suitable for my problem or not you, you can come to know that so as a teacher i should not uh, encourage to the my students uh, apply ga to this application pso is this application uh, so and so so and so like that uh, we should not train the student like this we have to educate how to use you have to give to freedom to them freedom to them uh, that is the teacher's job you should not say that uh, like this a plus b was square means a square plus b square plus 2ab then a is equal to b is equal to then 2 plus 2 was square this will come like that you should not address uh, how to do that you should explain then how to substitute and how to simplify and how to do he has to struggle and he has to learn you have to educate that but don't give the spoon feeding this algorithm for this application like that it is not good also okay so these are the uh, some algorithms are available in the literature uh, familiarly you can see whenever if you are going to um, uh, get some knowledge, uh, information uh, frequently you are going to see these algorithms and number of algorithms are there not only this so now we have the test functions uh, many local minima functions valley shaped functions bowl shaped functions uh, plate shaped other shapes uh, alkey function then holder table function, then the six hump camel function, Rosenberg function, uh, spear shape, uh, some square functions, uh, like this, power sum functions, like that, we have n number of uh, test functions. We'll get immediately doubt. So what is the uh, test function? Or what about the previous one? These are the algorithms. It's systematic uh, sequence of uh, uh, steps are involved uh, to solve the problem. That is why it is called as an algorithm. With the help of uh, G algorithm, you can solve the, your problem. Or PSO, or uh, DE, or Taguchi, or J algorithm. One of them, you can pick up and you can do that. This is that. But after studying, after studying, you may get doubt. Why can't you do this way? Why can't you do that way? Why should I have to follow that? He said like that. Why should I have to follow? Why can't you do this way? Like that, you will get a doubt. After studying four five algorithms, definitely if you are a learning phase really want to learn something definitely this question will come why should i have to apply they said fine that is true they apply, they ask you to do this way why should not go this way some normally when they are going to gate to main building uh people say go this way but immediately after going you have four or five diversions why can't you go that way why can't you go this way your questions will erase definitely then one may be longer one may be shorter one may be difficult even if it is shorter it is not good because of that then finally we are going to do one one path so we should know that why can't to do this way why can't to do like that so that question should arise after studying four five algorithms if you are not getting any type of this uh, questions then you are not studied properly algorithms. Then you need to study few more algorithms again and again. So when you got this means, and you are going to find new algorithms, new algorithms, there is no doubt. You are going to find some novelty in the algorithms. Are you going to find? So when you observe the nature thoroughly, closely, if, if when you are going to watch the nature thoroughly, how it is going on, the changes, and from that, we can get n number of ideas, n number of ideas. And from that, you can develop the new algorithms, new algorithms for existing problems. Are you got the point or not? See, if you go through this, uh, 
particle swarm optimization we people are observed the the movement of the birds why that is moving and how it is moving and all why they are going as a group uh, even if it is a step how it is comes if you go to the garden and uh, see that the bees are uh, going all the bees are will go to the where the more flower density is there says so that you are released the uh, bees from the box in the garden initially it will spread randomly in all the directions after a few minutes all the bees will go to uh, one place where the more flowers are there in the plant assume that in the garden somewhere else is a dry somewhere else uh, trees are there plants are there but there is no flowers and all and in a particular location more flowers are there then automatically all this will go to that location if you observe that how it is going what is the concept behind that even if it is few bees are left and after four or five seconds or uh, the uh, which uh, uh, bees are gone or uh, uh, change their direction later it will uh, change their path and finally reach to reach to the uh, where the more flowers are there in the location so when you observe this then you will get the ideas how that is moving how Similarly, when you drop the something into the uh, lake or in a pond, then uh, immediately so many fishes will come to collect the food particles. How they are getting? So you need to observe the thing. The person who is going to observe and watch, he, he is ready to find something than the others. Simply if you see, you can't do that. You can't enjoy and you can't uh, get the ideas also. But if you watch it, if you observe this is the difference is there seeing is different observing and watching is it so when you observe and watch then uh, you can get the so many ideas and you can study the subject thoroughly when you study the subject thoroughly and you can able to develop the algorithm easily how it is and all you dropped something again you, you are going to drop the uh, some more food particles in some other location all this uh, fish particles will move to the other direction how that you have to study that all i'm telling just i'm motivating so uh, see so if you observe this then you will get so many questions then from that you, you are going to explore and from that you will get the solution and from that you are going to develop the algorithm and that can be used in a in your field in your problem so as a monkey algorithm all these things are there so you observe the nature bat algorithm ant algorithm so what i'm going to say is you have to observe that closely then you will get the ideas then you may get immediately so our people are observed and they got the answers don't think that still problems still you will get the ideas the only thing is you have to look in that direction closely you have to observe closely means not uh, 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 just one centimeter from the object that is not the meaning of the close here how changes are coming why it is you have to put the question all the questions how what when why all these things you have to put then you will get the answers and from that you will get the algorithm then you have to do that are you got the point or not so when you do this when you observe the uh, what you call uh, um, nature very closely or your surroundings if you observe closely we will get the ideas we will get the ideas and once you got the ideas no need of existing algorithms you can develop the new algorithm with the help of previous knowledge previous knowledge will help you no doubt how to proceed it's it will save you time it will save you time so that is it so once you got the new ideas and you got the algorithm and you are going to say muttu algorithm reddy algorithm lata algorithm shanmugam algorithm like that you are going to say say your name is shanmugam you found this uh, some novelty and you are going to shanmugam algorithm muttu algorithm nothing wrong selvaraj algorithm but you develop and you are going to apply and you are going to submit the paper but acceptance rate will be very very less 
sorry just i said you are asked to to observe and i got the new new ideas and based on that i developed and i, I applied in the uh, my area and uh, why before going to submit your paper you have to test it on test functions you have to apply on a test functions already these are well known functions rosenberg uh, all these things at least you have to pick up half a dozen functions test function and on that functions you have to apply your algorithm your shanmuga shanmuga algorithm or muthu algorithm or reddy algorithm you have to apply your novelty algorithm should be applied on this test functions then see the results then see the results then we may ask doubt why how to apply the obvious question see the editor will ask you, how can i believe your algorithm is stable how can i say it is uh, effective uh, how it is uh, reducing like that is the input questions he doesn't know your is problem your problem then you have to tell i have applied all these uh, test functions of a dozen and uh, based on the literature say for example rosenberg function based on the literature these are the responses i have applied my new algorithm and this is my response and you have to tell i also got the same result but with 10 seconds they got it 20 seconds i got a uh, error is very less they got more error uh, I, i got the same output with the less iterations they got more iterations i, I have I have completed my task with the uh, less number of additions or multiplications. They are they are computed uh, with more number of uh, additions and multiplications uh, and other operations. So like this, you should address. With the known function, you have to tell that my algorithm is doing better job than the existing literature survey. You have to compare your results with the existing literature. then people will appreciate as yes, this is valid then tomorrow onwards your algorithm is going to be accepted so you have to tell to the your student like this see ga is there okay these are the steps apply what is there in that for that a teacher is not required teacher job is to motivate the student you have to you have to identify their inner qualities and you have to ignite and the students has to identify their capabilities like that you have to teach like that you have to teach that is the meaning of the teacher see at the same time you have to address ga you have to address all algorithms based on the syllabus you have to address say amplified design you have to address how how it works how to design how to select ic how to select vc how to design biasing uh, what should be the max handling capacity uh, what is the active region what is the uh, uh, saturation region cut off region everything you have to address there is no doubt in that but at the same time you have to motivate the boy how to design we should not give the spoon feeding you have to explain the design concept but at the same time he has to do it by himself like that you have to teach like that you have to teach here also when you are addressing the optimization techniques to your boys you have to address the algorithm existing algorithm at the same time you have to motivate the boy to find the new algorithm so when you observe the surroundings closely you will get the so many ideas and with that you can do so that is the reason you have to select the test functions and apply your novelty algorithm and see that and see the performance and if it is giving better then well and good otherwise you need to change it you need to fine tune then finally you'll get the better results so these are the different test functions then you have to see that now we am going to our field in 21st century the modern wireless communication services are spreading rapidly every day you know that we are witness today we are enjoying now we are taking the class because of this only otherwise it is not possible with the help of the service only it is possible in the tough time also we are engaged with the online classes 
because of this service. If the service is not possible, it is not. But at the same time, we should handle it properly. We should use properly. But uh, we have so many complaints from the uh, uh, children's, from the family members. So are my boys uh, uh, continuously using laptop, continuously using mo mobile, is playing the games, uh, is watching the other things, so, so he is ch charting with them. But see, they, hey, whenever if you develop something, we have advantages and disadvantages. We have pros and cons. But you have to handle properly. Once you, as long as if you are going to handle in the properly, we will get a benefits. There is no doubt in that. Okay. So these services are spreading rapidly in every day. That is the reason nowadays without this cell phone, it is very difficult to complete the task. The, the roadside worker also has the cell phone and PM also has the cell phone. Prime Minister also has the cell phone. The, not only the roadside worker, the burger also has the phone, cell phone. They have the cell phones. So they know that, how to handle this. So, so many features are there. So when you're spreading this, with that, the electromagnetic uh, environment is also is a increases. So slightly, the pollution will occur. So how to handle this? Th those things you are going to see. Now, the spot antenna array uses evolutionary algorithm, which not only maximizes the signal power in the desired direction, but also plays nulls in the undesired directions to minimize the interference effect on the system. So how to minimize this uh, electromagnetic effect or how to improve the signal quality, uh, how to handle these uh, things. So for that, we have to focus the entire energy in a particular direction and uh, wherever the unwanted signals are coming in that particular direction, you have to place that. So that interference can be minimized. How to solve this? How to handle this problem? What is the solution? This is very simple. We have a number of techniques. Uh, when you refer the standard test book, Pras and Balani's and any anti standard test books, we'll get the methods. Fourier transform, Taylor's method, Woodward Lesson method, uh, Dolph Shevchi methods are there. So the, uh, some equations will be there and you can apply and uh, from that you can get the uh, magnitudes. And uh, those magnitudes, if you apply to the your array and accordingly you will get the pattern. Problem is over, but you can't apply. Why? By angle, desired direction is not at all fixed always. It is a dynamic. Just now it is 30 degrees. After some time, 60. After some time, 120. Sometimes it will crosses the boundary. Some, it will go to some other region. It completely changes the coverage area. Right now you are in the Warangal town. It is linked to the local base station. The, after some time, uh, if, if I'm on the, on the travel, then after one hour, I'll go to the Hyderabad. Then my coverage area is changed. My base station will uh, identify, will recognize in which direction is going and nearby station is going to be giving the signal. So temporarily, my data is going to be stored in a, that uh, uh, where I'm going to uh, destination. Say you're going from Hyderabad to Warangal or Hyderabad to Bangalore. Presently you are Hyderabad. So your data is uh, uh, entirely in the base station. When you are moving to the Bangalore, then say at the early morning, say you are traveled and early morning, when you switch on that, you immediately will get the message, welcome to Bangalore city, hotly welcome to Bangalore city. We are not registered. You are not informed to your base station also, I'm going like that. But continuously it is monitored uh, in which direction you are moving, where you are going and all. Then temporarily your data is going to be registered in the Bangalore city. Then they are going to handle that. So handoff will take. So how to handle these things and all? So all these things we are doing. Now you can see different beams are there, especially in a modern technology. Different uh, shaped beams are widely used in the satellite and mobile and uh, radar, radar applications. If you take the all India radio uh, signal, is going to be radiated in all the directions. But in a satellite communication, in a mobile, in a radar applications. We don't want to radiate in all the directions. 
based on the application a particular region we need to cover only that much area we our main lobe should cover have you got the point so based on the application we need for radar applications the beams are different for mobile the the beam structures are different so based on the application uh, we need to adjust the these beams for that we need to handle the weights of the our network so for that we have the some uh, traditional uh, classical methods uh, uh, steepest uh, descent method uh, uh, newton's method uh, lms algorithm least mean square algorithm these are the uh, traditional techniques and it is very simple easily can implement very few steps are there within half an hour you can uh, develop the code this is such a simple thing once you understand the algorithm so how this it works is very simple they are trying to minimize the error they, that is why it is called as a uh, least mean square algorithm they always they are trying to minimize the error are you able to follow is it clear just i need some feedback are you attentive hello please respond yes, any one of you yes sir good 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 because uh, periodically i have to check it whether the link is there or not okay fine the least mean square algorithm so here uh, we are trying to minimize the error minimize the error between the actual and the design we got the output from the system that is called as the actual output from your system this actual output based on your present inputs present input. but you are not happy you need some desired output to get the desired output we need to adjust this one weights so how to adjust I, I have to map it so when i'm trying to map so we try to find the error between these two signals desired and actual so try to find out the error so when you are getting the error sometimes it will be positive sometimes it will be negative so i am not interested in the ne positive or negative hence i am going to take the square so square and i am trying to find the mean so that is why it is called as a mean square so i am going to find the mean square error between uh, desired and the actual output so with the help of this lms algorithm uh, continuously i am trying to minimize this error at one moment the error will be minimized or trends to zero once it is zero then my actual output is is closer to desired then i am going to stop and i am going to use the my algorithm for practical application so this is the algorithm it is a simple and easily can implement but the problem is it will uh, get stuck at a local minima and a local minimum and can it uh, it will run it takes more time convergence also will be slow that is the reason uh, certain applications we can't apply lms certain applications not for all certain applications if this is excellent or go to the point so if it is not suitable for your problem then you have to go for adaptive algorithms to get a better solutions than the traditional methods that is the reason why you are going for the optimization techniques if it is not suitable then we have to go for that you have to go for that. see not only this lms we can apply uh, this uh, uh, taylor's method fourier transform chebyshev method and all but takes time when you, when you go to the practical scenario uh, your beam is highly dynamic so, uh, continuously changes and accordingly you have to adjust the uh, weights so that your beam is going to be modified so otherwise uh, you, your uh, user is changing the direction but your beam is not at all able to change then is useless so uh, you need to compute quickly but uh, when you are doing on the paper it takes much time so instead of that uh, we are going for uh, algorithms so that algorithms will do that are you got the point or not okay. then we will get doubt sir i don't want to apply algorithms sir uh i uh, can i use the trial and error method yes you can use but uh, it takes much time when you are going to succeed you don't know so infinite uh, iterations are required but this is not possible so uh, sometimes you will get a first iteration or sometimes you will get a the last iterations so uh, trial and error is not at all advisable so better you have to develop the algorithm and with the help of that we can uh, save the time and uh, other things now what do you mean by beam forming it's a very simple 
we need to handle the beam we need to adjust the beam according to user or based on the demand based on the demand you are adjusting the your lobes your radiation pattern lobes are going to be adjusted hence it is called as a beam forming how you are going to do this is very simple receiving antenna you can see the structure here we can see four antennas are there and these four antennas are going to be capturing the signal capturing the signal from the free space and before going to get the output these signals are going to be modified with the help of these waves w0 w1 w2 and so on wn when you have n elements wn so to get this desired pattern you see that uh, main beam is in a user direction and the nulls are in a interference direction you can see one interference null is there again here null is there these are uh, uh, side loops other side loops but there is no uh, interference so even if the side loop is there nothing wrong nothing wrong say for example you are taking the class you are taking the class a lot of noise is coming from the surroundings then immediately what you are going to do you are closing the doors or windows in which direction it is coming that particular window you are go going to close say for example you have four or five windows in a, uh, all the corners in the from the north sound is coming only north window you are going to close no need to close the uh, other direction windows or got the point similar here uh, in particular direction uh, interference coming in that direction only we are going to place the now we are going to place the now as in that uh, we have one more uh, uh, interference coming in this direction then immediately they have to suppress the this side lobe also this side lobe also so based on the problem you have to modify your radiation pattern so to get the desired pattern at the output of your system we need to adjust these weights how to handle this what should be the value 0 1 2 3 say for example is a voltage 1 volt 0.5 volt, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. What is the value? And normally you are going to give the signal. Means you have the amplitude and phase. What is the phase? 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 5 degrees. What is the phase? How much I have to give? So we have infinite values. And feeding infinite values and testing, it is not possible. It is very difficult to do that. So when you are doing all these things, your system demands high speed networks. I speed, uh, I speed processors also. With that only it is possible. All these smart antennas beamforming should run on I processor only. If your processor is very slow, then uh, we can't get the result accordingly uh, based on the uh, practical scenario. Or you got the point. So it was, it is, it was, uh, uh, practically it demands the signal to be changed, but your processor is taking more than that time. Then it is useless. So we need high processors and these uh, weights should be adapted instantaneously. So uh, assume that now the signal is uh, maybe uh, some uh, with respect to this, uh, say for example, 80 degrees. Now the beam is going to say 120. Uh, in a fraction of a second, it changes. Then uh, we need to adjust these weights uh, immediately. So we have to identify and you have to adjust these weights. So for that, we need uh, optimization techniques. Then, what are the applications? A number of applications are there in radar, sonar, communication, imaging, uh, like this. The list will go by medical and all. Uh, all are in a, you can say different, just I listed out a number of applications are there. Especially in communication, smart system, directional uh, uh, transmission, reception, and sector uh, uh, broadcast in a satellite mobile communication. So, these are the applications one should have this so when you know that then you can get interest okay then introduction overview of the antenna parameters control pa is up to this it is only motivation is a motivation we need to observe the surroundings thoroughly you have to watch closely and get the ideas and based on that you have to develop the algorithm and you have to apply it to the your problem so for that you have to study the problem thoroughly once you study the problem thoroughly we'll get the solution easily your problem itself will give the solution then 
these optimization techniques can be applied in number of fields engineering and non engineering in a, uh, what do you call in electrical engineering for power distribution people are going to use the optimization techniques how to handle this power management and all and you can uh, apply in the mechanical engineering how to design the uh, the gear boxes and all these things the uh, wheel and uh, all these things uh, handle design and all uh, how to get the uh, aerodynamic aero what you call the uh, aero mission uh, uh, dynamics and all these things you can apply optimization techniques in uh, civil structural designs you can apply how many be uh, bearings are required how many columns are required all these things can be done with the help of optimization technique uh, what you call the load bearing technique and you can apply in uh, our field also so if you go through the any software uh, most of the softwares are from uh, based on the optimization technique but they are not going to reveal that which algorithm they are going to use and all if you go to the ie3d uh, inside they are going to use the optimization and software they are going to use that in a matlab they are going to use the optimization tool so with the help of that only they are going to solve the uh, mathematical equations are you got the point so you should know the importance of the optimization technique it can be used in any field how to use this depends on your interest so you should motivate to the boy this is the only motivation normally for motivation itself i am going to take four or five classes in regularly but here it is not possible uh, i hope that you understand the significance of the motivation so like this you have to address to the boy definitely boy will get the interest once you get the interest he will learn by himself but today why people are away from the studies means uh, means because of uh, the way we are teaching and the way we are asking the questions so by hurting and reproducing grinding and reproducing that is why it is happening so there many other reasons are there uh, there is not the right platform to address all these things but briefly i am telling so we have to change the uh, style so that boy will get the interest okay now so the worry of the antenna parameters uh, if you want to apply uh, optimization technique you should know the uh, clearly antenna parameters then uh, what are the control parameters are there uh, to control the shape and all the pattern shape and all so these are the things we are going to see so one should have the knowledge uh, before going to apply these techniques and all what are that what do you mean by isotropic directional omnidirectional patterns radiation lobes field regions near field far fields then power density directivity gain efficiency band width uh, then beam width polarization input impedance like this uh, once we have this uh, terminology the significance the importance of the design equations and then uh, you can easily handle the uh, your problem otherwise it is very difficult uh, you want to reduce the beam first of all you should know what is the main beam what is the side lobe how to all these things so once if you have this terminology this uh, one can easily handle the problem then this is the typical radiation pattern now you can see this is the main lobe and most of the energy is focused here in this zone and these are the side lobes especially in a mobile communication we don't want the side lobes why if the side lobe is there means it will interfere as the nearby so okay next next zone edge and channel interference will come uh, 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 not only that next channel interference so to avoid that uh, we have to be careful so you have to handle properly so this is the back lobe these are the side lobes this is the main lobe this is the field pattern this is the power pattern so based on the application don't think that uh, uh, side lobes are use, useless but based on the application uh, we need to suppress sometimes we don't want then you can uh, radiate it based on the application so if you go to the all india radio communication the signal will be radiated in the all direction so when i'm taking the class uh, my signal will go in the all direction when i'm in on what do you call in a open space because the students are around me around me or you got the point if in the class my signal should be in the forward direction no need of a backward because the back side is a blackboard no use so i have to see when i turn towards the backboard and if i'm taking the class is a meaningless my energy will go towards the board not the boys so when i'm taking the class my head should be focused towards the um, students so that the energy will be go so smoothly and easily with the less attenuation with the less attenuation so that it will cover the more distance 
So we know that. So that's all I'm telling you. You should understand the problem, then we can handle it easily. The... Okay. So these are the things. Now we have to a single element and now. Uh, relatively, it is a wide radiation pattern and low directivity. Normally, we need to transmit the signal from uh, one point to another point at the longer distance. So, to meet the demand of the lo uh, long distance communication, to meet the demands of the long distance communication, uh, it demands uh, uh, antenna with, with a very high gains, antennas with a very high gain. Then only it is possible. Uh, otherwise, say if I'm going to uh, say now in the, my house, I'm going to speak with, uh, with the low energy level because uh, we all are in the uh, in the sink in the room. Uh, hardly it is a 10 feet, 15 feet. So with le less energy. If I'm going to take the class the same energy level in the classroom, uh, only first two rows are going to enjoy. The last bench cannot under understand. Then voice will shout. Sir, we are unable to hear. Then I have to increase my voice. I have to increase my energy level. Uh, are you got the point or not? So. When I'm taking the class, I have to increase. If I'm going to take the same class in the auditorium, it is not possible. Even if I shout it, uh, it will go only up to uh, some 20, 30 feet. Beyond that, it is not possible. Uh, so I have to go for some mechanism. With the help of that only, uh, I can take the class there. We need uh, some amplifiers and with that, we can do that. So you should understand the problem and accordingly, you have to get the solution. So when you need to transmit the signal from one point to another point, uh, you know, especially for a long distance communication, uh, your uh, antenna system will demand more gain, more gain. So we need to increase the size. There is no other choice. You have to increase the size. Increase the electrical size. But simply if you increase the electrical size, then your structure will be very big one. And it is very difficult to handle also. So for example, your cell phone is demands uh, you structure uh, structural antenna nobody is going to prefer to use because now you are carrying you are going to keep in the pocket and uh, uh, there is no technology for for time being and assume that uh, uh, this cell phone uh, uh, connected a huge structural antenna then how to handle then people will say we don't want the mobile technology it is very difficult to carry so we have to find how to do that and all these things are done are you got the point? So uh, we don't want a uh, huge structure, but problem should be solved. So uh, even say, for example, you have a, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, your system demands uh, uh, only five centimeters length antenna, one side. Say in the system, so many blocks are there, amplifiers, so many sections are there. In one section, antenna section, they said uh, this much area we are providing, and beyond that you can't, uh, do that so in that area only you have to fix the your antenna they said uh, five by five five centimeter by five centimeter area we are giving there only you have to place your antenna your patch and or water of the antenna you have to place there only but based on your design you got the maybe 20 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters based on the design but your system demands only five centimeters how to reduce simply if you scale down you can't get the resonance frequency. If you want to get the, uh, the based on your equations, uh, it demands uh, some 10 centimeters or uh, 20 centimeters. Then you have to increase the size. But at the same time, it occupies the less space. If you go to the fractal and with the help of the fra fractal geometry, the electrical length can be increased. That is one of the reasons why people are going for the uh, electric. And the sizes remain same. Sometimes uh, the copper, effective copper uh, is still reduced, cost still decreases and occupies uh, less space and you'll get the same resonance frequency. So if you take the simple uh, square uh, box, then uh, it is five centimeter by five centimeter, five by five. And if you are going to use some uh, sections in that, uh, all four sides, uh, then the perimeter is going to be increases tremendously. What is the circumference of the square? Five centimeters square. Five plus five plus five plus five. Four fives. Twenty centimeters. The circumference. Just twenty. Beyond that, I can't get it. If I'm going to take some sections, if I remove some edges, some patterns, uh, there I'm going to some. I'm going to introduce some shape. 
then what happened if you measure that circumference area the circumference length tremendously increases earlier it is only 20 cm it may be 30 or 40 it depends on uh, your number of sections at the edges that is called as a uh, fractal end now. then it has certain rules uh, symmetry and all this is how to do and all then uh, that is another subject again so you should know the subject thoroughly then you, you can get the solution easily. then there also again you can apply the optimization technique how to do the sections how to get it and all okay so here uh, you have to increase the size so what is the solution one is uh, you have to enlarge the your antenna you have to enlarge the dimensions of your single antenna the problem solved but it is not advisable for your problem it is not demanding it is not allowing to use such a structure then you have to go for small element but array so with the help of the array we can meet that we can meet that so these are the so based on the application sometimes you have to uh, increase the uh, size also so it depends on the application uh, you have to choose option one or option two based on the system okay so two uh, solutions are there based on the application you have to pick up then so if you go for a uh, option two array then you have a group of elements on one platform and these group of elements can be arranged in a different fashions in a linearly in a rectangular in a triangular or a circular in a different fashions that decides the array geometry so based on the array geometry the shape radiation pattern is going to be affected so the overall pattern your radiation out, outcome of the system you have n elements the outcome is a decided by these parameters collectively or independently are you got the point or not so what are that area geometry you are using linearly or a circularly a triangular or planar or what is the shape how you are arranging the elements on the area that decides your pattern and not only that geometry uh, the distance between the element even it is linear the distance will decides distance will decides see when you are conducting the exams uh, we are going to place the uh, we are going to maintain some distance between the boys we are going to maintain the distance if they are going to sit side by side then we know that they are copying if you are going to maintain certain distance then copying is going to be reduced once you understand the problem then you will get the solution similarly also we should know that subject thoroughly if you understand the subject thoroughly and uh, you can play like anything you can play so you, you have to adjust the distance then you, you can have a control on the pattern not only the distance and amplitude and phase and pattern means either dipole or r and or helical and spherical and what is the dish antennas so what is the shape of that so these are the uh, five important uh, parameters to control the your pattern we can control by dis displacement you can control by amplitude or the phase of the signal which you are going to feed to the system or the geometry or the pattern you can uh, simon are you got the point or not so these are the control parameters then you should have the subject on this if you refer to any standard test book uh, and in our textbook, you will have the knowledge. Once you got the knowledge, then you can play. Then, if you take the smart antenna system, you, you have to model it and you have to use the optimization technique, beamforming techniques, then you have to estimate the uh, in which direction signal is uh, coming. Now you can see linear array. We have the linear array. Just, uh, just I'm going to explore uh, these uh, what other things are there. I'm going to motivate it. So assume that you have the linear array. Then uh, what is the outcome of this your YFT? You can go back to your previous uh, slide. Yeah, Y of T is equal to X of T into weights. You see that X of T incoming into weights. So your output is equal to incoming signal is multiplied by your weights. The same thing I have did here, same thing. So y of t is equal to x into w of t. 
so where w is the your array weights array weights and x is the your signal vector so signal you got it and you need to get the y of t desired output the actual y signal should match it to desired one to get the desired output we need to adjust this uh, weights the weights weights may be distance may be amplitude may be phase or anything we can uh, control or you got the point so how to control that how to give that signal that's the thing that's the thing are you got the point or not a a plus b is equal to 10 a plus b is equal to 10 and a is 0 to 5 b is 0 to 5 range then what is the answer then 5 plus 5 over we are going to substitute 0 plus 5 is wrong 1 plus 5 wrong like that we are, we are doing trial and error then. instead of doing uh, trial and error you develop the algorithm and feed it what you want and then then you will get the output what you are going to do trial and error the same thing it is done by your algorithm your algorithm because your algorithm is doing at a faster rate at a faster rate just i'm giving one example a plus b is equal to 10 what should be the a value what should be the b value assume that a range is 0 to 10 b also is 0 to 10 what are the possible answers one answer is 5 5 why can't you 0 5 which substitute 0 5 is a 5 is equal to 10 no it's wrong 5 plus 5 is correct 0 plus 10 is correct 10, 10 plus 0 is correct like that we are going to substitute and whenever it is matched you are going to say correct then finally you are going to say oh these are the answers so the same thing i'm going to do i'm going to develop the algorithm I'm going to substitute the values. I'm going to verify the error. If error is zero, yes, answer is correct. These are the, otherwise go back. So like that. Then where we can apply this LMS algorithm in a signals system, especially in our domain, filtering problems, system identification, equalization, the prediction problem, echo cancellation, people are using this LMS. If you go to the MATLAB toolbox, there you can see, and you can see that LMS algorithm. We can also apply in uh, in our beamforming also. You can apply this LMS in the uh, electrical domain in electrical applications. So n number of applications. Then how to develop this LMS algorithm? That is my question. It's a very simple. You have to recollect it quickly. This. Recollect it. It's a number game. See, present generation, if you ask uh, what is a number game, means uh, they don't know what is a number guessing and all. They are familiar with uh, uh, present games, online gaming, and all these things. But recollect your uh, childhood uh, uh, playing and all. Childhood. Maybe four or five members are involved in the game. One person is the, we can call it as a leader or uh, uh, what do you call uh, handling the game. Others are uh, participating. This so one person has the box, is going to pick up the one coin from the box. The box having uh, some numbers, 0 to 100 numbers. He will pick up the randomly one number. He knows, he has the rights to see that what is that number. He knows very well. And he is holding and asking to the others, what is this number? The, the Those who are involved in the game, they will say 10 is wrong, 20 wrong, 30 wrong, like that. He is giving chance to everyone. They said they are guessing. Then he said wrong. Again, he has given a, one more chance. Again, they said some another number. Because already one, one number is gone, so it is wrong. So they will change. Earlier they said 10, now they said 30 is wrong. L like that it goes. At one moment, is a go game is going to be over. But sometimes it will be over by what first iteration, sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes 30, sometimes infinite. We don't know when it is going to be end. When it is going to be end, we don't know. It's a maximum 100. 100 iterations. 0 to 100. So 0, 1, 2, like that is good. Say, for example, it is 100. They said 0 to 99. So 9. 
100 iterations over the 100th one. So th then the game will be over. They said in the first iteration, the number is 100 over. Have you got the point? So that is GC. But now we have to wait for that. Instead of that, he has molded the number and assume that he, the number is 20. He knows that very well. What is the number? He has molded and asked the boy, what is the number? They said 10. It's wrong. Now he is going to add few more conditions. Few more conditions. You, you, you are in the bottom. Then you will uh, go to the 100. You know, is too high. Then immediately you will come to uh, 30. Still it is high, 20. So like this, uh, based on the uh, inputs, uh, quickly you, you will change this casing. Earlier, it doesn't have that knowledge. Simply say 10, 20, 30, 40, like that is going on in the first game. In the second game, is going to say you are far away or closer to that. Uh, like that is giving some inputs. Based on that, you will change the direction quickly and you will come to the solution. So less iterations are required. Are you got the point, Anna? In the first iteration, in the first game, he holded the number and is asking the what is the number? He said 10. Wrong. Says so him that he has holded 20. He said 10. Wrong. Then again, less chance. 40. Wrong. Less chance. 50. Wrong. Less chance. 90. Wrong. Like that is going on. But here, they are not changing the day. Simply they are telling. Sometimes it will be over with the one or two iterations. In the second game, he is older the number. He knows that very well. But he is going to say that you are in the which direction? At the bottom or above? Be below or above? Are you got the point or not? So he holded 20. He said 0. He said 0. You are down. Then he changed the upward direction. 100. You are, it is up but too high. Then immediately you will come down. Maybe 50. Still you are up. Then you will. So he is reducing quickly. Are you got the point? With the less iterations, you will come. the game is going to be ended. So when he is saying... When he's going to say that, uh, based on this, the, based on the error, he's changing the direction. When you are saying too low, then immediately he's going to up direction. It's already you're up, but it's too up means he's reducing. So based on that, error difference is changing the direction. So is the present present guess value, and based on the his inputs, is going to change the next number. So the new number is going to be updated with the present value with the error difference. And based on that, the game is going to be over quickly. I hope that you understand this. Is that clear? The game is clear? Please respond. Yes, sir. Anyone? Yes, good. Yes, sir, it is clear. Now, yeah, good. Once again, I'm going to explain quickly the game because the LMS is purely depends on that only. Purely depends on that one. Among uh, players, one player has the rights to hold the box. He will hold the box and he has the rights to see the coin. He is going to pick up the one coin and he will see that, but he won't tell the answer. What is the coin he has holded? For time being, he has holded 50, 5 0. He never says the what, what was the number inside his hand. He will ask the part, next one. What is this number? He will say 10. You are a bottom, downward direction. Then immediately you will go to upward, 100. You are upward direction. Then immediately is going to change, 20. Still you are, you are a bottom. Then you will go to 60. Like that, based on the his comments, he is going to change the direction. Change the direction. And finally, quickly, is coming to the destination. So every time you will say, you are too long, too high, too small, like that is going to give the you are upward direction very long uh, and downward direction uh, like that. So when he's saying uh, the direction and based on that, you will change the step size. So present 10, he said 10, you are downward, two down, then immediately he will say uh, 30. Still you are down, 40. Then he says that you are down. Then immediately 
is going to 100. You are too up. Then you will come to 60. Then you are up, but little bit. Then you will come to 55. You are up very little. Then 52. Like that. So finally, with after four or five iterations, you will come to the destination. So every time the error is changes. So based on the error direction is changing the next value. So the same thing I'm going to do here. You can see the present value is at 10. Your step size and the difference. If the difference is negative, is changing to the upward direction and the step value. And with that changing present value. So present value plus the difference upward or downward and the step size. So, so for example, 10 is a, you are two down. So negative, negative. But uh, what happened is the step size, maybe another 10. So 20 is going to say, still you are down, uh, then next 30. So every time the step size and based on the difference value is going to change the next value. So the next value is equal to present value plus step plus input signal and the difference. This is the thing only is involved in the LMS algorithm. Even in the game also, that's why in the beginning I said, try to observe the surroundings Surroundings means not only the trees and all, those also you have to observe. What is happening in, the, in and around you? You observe and you can get the solutions. You can get the excellent solutions. If you observe the nature thoroughly, surroundings, then you will get the problems easily. You can solve the problems easily. Then, what are the parameters involved here? Convergence, cost function, rate of convergence, computational requirement, and robustness. What do you mean by that? This is very simple. You got the solution. You got the solution. How fast you got it? That is important. That it decides the rate of convergence. You got it, but you got after 100 iterations. Is it meaningless? You got the results with the 10 iterations, but there are more than convergence is important. So you have to be very careful. How handle you are this? So whenever you are developing any algorithm, you have to check. What is the convergence rate? Means error. How much error? Say your value is 9.5. Whether you are closer to 9.5 or how much it is error, it is there. So the, whether you converge it closely or not, how far you are. So that is the meaning. Cast function. So to meet this, you have to define what are the parameters involved here. So you have to define properly. This is called as an objective function. Cast function. Are you got the point? In uh, different uh, literature uh, papers, they are going to use different names cost function, uh, objective function like that. You have to be very careful. You have to define. Uh, you want to find the minimum or a maximum. What is that? Now, accordingly, you have to say you want to suppress side limbs. You want, based on that, you have to define the your cost function properly. And rate of convergence, how fast you are going to converge the uh, problem to that. And how you are going to minimize the error. You are going to minimize the error with the 10 iterations or 100 iterations. That is a matter. So you have to get the error less, but quickly how to get it. Then computational requirement. You are getting, but how many additions, multiplications, subtractions, or divisions, how, how many operations are required? Because uh, the entire energy is de depends on that only. So computational load you have to you have to calculate and robustness. So whether it is only for this problem or it can be applied any, or if it changes the environment, it, it will work or not. So you have designed the problem. Uh, when you are tested in the laboratory, it is working. But when it is comes to the practically, it is not working. Why? At that time, you are not considered the uh, noise environment or temperature or some other parameters. So you are doing in the room, uh, within the room, in the four walls. There, the temperature is normal. There is no noise and all these things. You are designed amplifier and there is no problem. When this comes to the practically, uh, your amplifier is uh, may not work properly. So you have to be very careful. Uh, so the temperature, surroundings, uh, then uh, ambient temperature, then uh, what do you call uh, um, all these things you should uh, uh, study. And uh, even if the changes the input parameters, uh, whether it will work or not. So these things you have to consider. Then if it is not working, yes, you should tell my algorithm is meant for particular application under the certain conditions. Then it is well and good. So if there is a generalized case or not, so you have to. Whenever you are going to develop the algorithm, you have to keep in your mind all these parameters, convergence, cost function, rate of convergence, computational requirement, then uh, robustness. Then, 
What are the steps? This is very simple. LM is equal to Y of N is equal to your incoming signal into multiplied by this. And you can get the different signal. Uh, this is the desired signal. And this is the actual signal. Y of N is the actual signal. So the you are you are expected this much. And actually it is coming. So take the sub difference. And you will get the error. So when you are trying to minimize this error, then your actual signal is same as desired. So problem is solved. So how to do that? So present value. See, this is, you can see. Next value is equal to present value plus step and input and difference value. The same thing we developed here. So next value, n plus one means next value. n means present value. Mu means step size. Your signal and error. So the same thing, go back here. Step, present, step, difference, and next value. So here also you can see. Next value is equal to present value plus uh, step value and error. So this is the updation equation in the LMS algorithm. So here, least means square. Least means square. So the, you are going to minimize the error. You are going to minimize the error. And so it is called as a, a least means square algorithm. You are trying to find the error and that is going to be minimized. And in the normalized LMS, uh, here your step function is depends on uh, your incoming signal. So that uh, we, we can have a good control on the algorithm, we'll get a better results. So here you can see that uh, if the gamma is a very small value. Sometimes uh, uh, your signal may be zero, this is a function. So then it will be in the trouble. Uh, it will go to in, uh, indifferent. So that is why we should have a small uh, uh, value, positive term. So that uh, this never be infinite. So it's not defined function. So you have to be very careful. So whenever it is uh, mu of n is a function of your incoming signal, the incoming signal should be added with a small term so that uh, the mu of n is never be uh, undefined term. Okay. So if mu is very, very small, uh, very, very small, it takes more uh, iterations, but uh, error will be less. It will be converged uh, perfectly, but it takes more time because uh, uh, slowly it is going to be updating. Say for example, your number is 50, you are at a 10, and your step size is 1, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like that you is going. So 10, 50 minus 10, error is negative, oh, sorry, 50 minus 10, uh, 40, then you have to increase 11, 50 minus 11, again negative, again error, then uh, 50 minus 13, like that every time you are doing. Uh, or you got the point. Instead of that, uh, 50 minus 10, you got 40. If the step size is uh, maybe 10, then next iteration, 50 minus 20, 50 minus 20, then you'll get 30. Or again, this time, 50 minus uh, uh, 30, uh, 50 minus 40, 50 minus 50, zero. You are stopped. With five iterations, you got it. Earlier, we need, uh, uh, if we start with zero, I need 50 iterations. Uh, step size is one, then I need a 50. Finally got it, but it takes more time. So based on the step size, it is there. So sometimes uh, if it is a, a fractional number, say your value is 50.5, the step size is one, step size is one. So you, then what happened? Uh, uh, it is not possible to converge completely. Then you have to live with the, with the minimum error because you are going to get the optimal results only. So quickly how to solve the problem with the uh, acceptable error. So the, when you do n number of problems, you can understand how to handle the uh, such uh, variations of now. Then you can see the simulation results here. Uh, when I'm taking the uh, n is equal to 21 and n is equal to 51, you see uh, red color is uh, 51 elements and uh, this one is uh, 21 elements. Our desired direction is 60. At 60, we have the desired. And un unwanted signal at minus 30. See, at minus 30, we have the null. So how to control with the help of our LMS algorithm? You can develop the, what you call, uh, array factor. And uh, you have to get the output and see the difference, uh, what type of signal you want, you find the error. And uh, every time, you have to update this weight. And finally, after a few iterations, will get the output. So now you can see that uh, convergence plot. 
Now you can see that number of iterations versus mean square error. Uh, you are going to find the error between the desired and what you want, you know, and what is the outcome of the, your system, you know, uh, and you find out the error. And uh, uh, you have, initially, error will be more because it's highly random. So, uh, uh, because initially it is not initialized and it starts with the zero or with a random number, so error will be more. So, now you can see that initially error. After a few iterations, then uh, every parameter is going to be uh, fine tuning and it is going to converge it to the actual value. So once the, all the uh, control parameter values are converging to uh, the actual values, then error will be decreasing. Now you can see that slowly error will be decreasing. Now we'll get down. So our error is decreasing, again increasing, again decreasing, because it is not tuned. So highly is random. So first four or five iterations, uh, uh, the error is also is increasing, decreasing and all. And after four or five iterations, uh, then uh, it will be uh, tuned, then finally uh, uh, error will be almost uh, tends to zero. So now you can see that almost zero. After 50 iterations, the error will be zero. So you'll get uh, at 50, uh, you have to start, and uh, at that time, what are the weights are there? The If you are using uh, um, what you call uh, uh, I DSP uh, uh, I processor, then you will get a uh, quickly and takes less time. Also, depends on the processing time. Uh, you can uh, uh, compute the how much time it is going to uh, takes uh, to get the these desired values. Because uh, the, it depends on the processor. If the processor is, is slow and it takes much time, if the processor is uh, uh, taking less time and uh, you can get the results quickly. So uh, on which platform and uh, which laptop and in the memory and the processor, everything will decide so, uh, this time and all, not only your algorithm. Weights. So that will get the desired output. So these are the uh, steps involved in the LMS algorithm. First, you have to define the parameters, distance, number of elements, desired signal direction, undesired signal direction, step size, side lobes, beam width, number of iteration. Everything you have to define first. Uh, so that is the initialization part in the LMS. Then you have to uh, construct the incoming signal and uh, noise signal. Uh, signal I have to construct a sine omega t or cos omega t based on the signal uh, nature and based on that you have to construct the signal uh, arrival and all in which direction it is coming and you have to develop the signal matrix then uh, we have to uh, develop the you have to update the weights with the help of the loop function uh, you have to update the weight vectors based on the previous equation so this expression W of n, n plus 1 is equal to Wn plus mu, mu into x of n into e of n. With the help of this equation, update equation, see that this is the initial weights, all these things, and this is the error, you have to estimate, and this is the updation. So you have to compute the error and you have to update the weights uh, by iteration by iteration. So with the help of this uh, for loop, uh, the weights should be updated. Okay, to update the weights, we need a present value, step size, and you have to calculate the uh, error. So we have to compute the error, take the present value, and step size. So with that, we can update the uh, next value. Or the present value should be updated to the next value based on the step size and error calculation. Or go to the point. With the help of the loop function, we can compute. Using the loop function, with the help of step function and the present value and error function, we can get the uh, next value. Then uh once you got it every time you have to check the error uh, two things are there to terminate that uh if the error is zero you have to terminate say you fix it the 100 iterations or thousand or ten thousand iterations uh at, at the end of the 10 100 iterations or uh, at 150th iteration you got the 
uh, better results. Then you have to stop. No need to run the algorithm up to 10,000. For example, the point, uh, you are not happy with the, uh, till that. Then you have to uh, check the program till that uh, termination is going to be over. So based on that, if the error is uh, zero before the maximum terminations, you have to stop. Otherwise, you ask the algorithm to uh, compute for the, uh, to check the termination condition. So once the termination condition is uh, matched, then it will be stopped. And what are the values are there at that time that you have to accept. And if you are happy, then you have to accept it. If the results are not good, then you have to change the algorithm or you have to modify this where the mistakes are there or not, you have to check it. So this is the termination checking because uh, uh, in the beginning itself, uh, number, of, number of iterations are going to be fixed. 100 iterations, 1000 iterations and all. So the termination checking, whether the error is zero or uh, whether you are matched uh, max iterations. If it is a uh, reached max iterations, it will come out the loop. And if uh, it is giving better results, you have to accept it. Otherwise you have to change the algorithm. Okay, then once it is terminated, then uh, we have the array factor. With the help of the array factor, uh, we can uh, plot the uh, array factor and converge these plots and all. With that, you can see how it is uh, performing. Sir? 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 Prakash? Sir? So just six steps are there. And when I'm trying to drop the... Excuse me, sir. Sir, you have yes. come out of the presentation mode, yeah. sir. Your slides are yeah. not visible now, sir. Just now. Okay. I'm not pressing anything. No. Again, no, sir. You check it. I'm Previously, you have uh, shared your... Uh, presentation screen showing LMS algorithm. Now it is it is yeah, not yeah. visible now, sir. Whether yeah. you have stopped the... No, it is... No, no, no sir. Now we are not getting. Why? Why do you problem? Because I'm not listening anything. Then once again, I have to go back to... Yes, sir. Uh, Google, Google Medicine link. No, sir. In the presentation mode, again, you have to go, sir. No, no. I'm not changing. There is a reason. I'm not changing any button. I'm not sir. pressing any button. Now. Sir, accidentally, Check it. sir, accidentally, uh -huh. your mouse click to stop sharing button, sir. So your sharing mode is off. So I request oh. you to kindly press it, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll minimize and I have to activate. Okay, Check sir. Check it. And Check it. Now it is coming. Check it. Yes, sir. But uh, the slide is not visible, sir. Yes, sir. Now no. it is visible, sir. No, it is visible. Uh, yes, sir. Visible. Now it is visible. Uh, yes, genetic sir, algorithm. Visible. Yeah, it's good. Yes. Uh, how much time is left? Tell me. Then based on that, I will. Uh, for me, there is no problem at all. I can spend. But based on uh, participants' interest, I can take the class. How much you want to? Spare time. Approximately five to ten minutes, sir. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, if you want, you can take even uh, fifteen to thirty minutes, sir. Okay, then it's good. Then okay. uh, we'll it's take up the to time five. is four thirty, sir. Uh, shall you go up to five? Five o'clock. Up to five o'clock. Now it is uh, four twenty-four. Yes, sir. Shall I continue another half an hour? Shall I take another half an hour? Any response? Shall I take the class okay, up sir. to five o'clock? Okay, sir. Right, right. Good, good, good. Good. If you are interested, I will take. Otherwise, uh, there is no force at all. Is it, that is not my intention. So no issues, sir. You can you continue, sir. Right, 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 right. Right. Because it's a very big topic. Uh, at least if you know at least two, three algorithms, you know the flavor of this optimization technique. Because if you go to the anything, 
where the background is optimization technically. So if you want to buy the shares on all, and uh, what is the next uh, prediction value? Today you purchased on uh, Tata Motors. Uh, after four five days, what should be the value? How you are going to predict? On what basis? And then normally uh, you are going to guess. Uh, they will give that some uh, what do you call uh, uh, company uh, meetings and all, and they they are going to announce some uh, uh, things based on that. They, you are going to guess and you are going to do. Then accordingly you are going to change the, your uh, action plan. So you are going to pick up the share, and uh, today is the price is this much, and what should be the prediction for the after one month or after two months or after three months and all, and based on that you are going to. So first thing is you have to take the, the profile of the company, and what is the demand, and everything you have to study. And uh, now it is the rainy season. What should be the demand for the that company, whether it is there or not, whether they are going to do or not, um, and especially the, during this time. A tough time when they are going to sell the product or not, uh, like this. So when you do all these things and properly, and you will get a clear idea whether the stock is going to upward direction or a downward. Direction. Simply, if you purchased and uh, previous history, it will go up. Means it's wrong because today situation is different and tomorrow situation is slightly different. And your Next value depends on the past, present, and future also. All these things are depends. So you have to get the data and you have to study properly and you have to define the cost function. And with the help of the cost function, we can estimate the next value. The same thing you are doing um, inside. You are going to do that. So when you are going to buy a DMART product, uh, DMART uh, share, whether the share will going to rise or not. Today it is okay. And after uh, two months, in near future, so many festivals are there, so many uh, occasions are there. So people will buy, they will purchase many items from the DMAT. So definitely they will get more profit. Then uh, the price may increase. That is your cost function in that you are taking. Suddenly something is happened, Corona or something, something lockdown issues came and all. Then uh, we, we can't access to the shop, and automatically sales will down. Then cost will decrease. Then profit will be less. Then share market will down. So these things you have to study the subject and accordingly you have to develop the cost function and you have to take the share into the account and you have to feed the, all these things and uh, wait is and you can predict it. How you are doing on your brain? How you are guessing for the future of the, your share? The same thing you have to develop the algorithm. I, I think you got the point. How optimization is plays a role in that? Is it clear? Is it clear? Please respond. Any one of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is yeah. clear, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. these optimization techniques not only to predict the shares, not only in the EC field, not only in the mechanical, not only CE, EC or non-engineering. It can be applied to study the corona also, corona situation. What is the present status? Tomorrow, what is that? Day after tomorrow, how it is varies? Why it is? Uh, if you are going to uh, introduce the vaccine, uh, how we are handling the vaccine? Uh, to whom we are giving the vaccine? Uh, what is the rate? At, at what rate uh, the vaccination is done? If you consider all these things into account and if you develop the algorithm based on the genetic or based on some other algorithm, we can predict easily what should be done, how to handle these problems also. Now people are going, a lot, lot of research is going on in this direction, especially these problems they are studying, how to handle these problems using these algorithms. They are predicting. So the algorithms are meant for to predict it. You have to guess it properly. For that, you should understand the problem thoroughly. If you understand the problem, you can develop the algorithm very nicely. In that, we need a cost function. And to define the cost function properly, you should study the subject thoroughly. Once if you study the subject, and you can easily develop the cost function. Once you develop the cost function easily, and you can get the solution easily. So irrespective of the algorithm, whether it's GE or PSO or what all that, these are the steps involved. Now we are going to see genetic algorithm. So here, uh, these are the steps are involved. Crossover, initialization, selection, mutation, and termination. So briefly, we'll see quickly. Uh, chromosome construction. Here, your numbers or your weight 
is going to be represented as a chromosome part. Then you have to define properly the structure. Then after that, you have to initialize the population. Initialize the population. That is called as a generation of the population. To solve the problem, we need some population. We need some candidates. You have to define 10, 20, 30, 40 and all. So for example, you want to select the cricket team for your college and you made an announcement. We are going to participate so and so event. So uh, some trials are going on. Those who are interested, uh, please give the names and all. Then you got the so many names. Maybe thousand students. All these thousands are initial population for you right now. All are initial population. You created for the team. Finally, you need some 22 or 11 members. How to select 11 from the thousand members? Are you going to take randomly? Or you are going to take based on the recommendation? If you do, then you will be the trouble. Your college never get the trouble. Because you are based on the uh, recommendation based on the random without any work, uh, you are selected the team and how they will perform. Sometimes you may get it. That is worst case. There's no guarantee you will get the cup because there is no proper drilling. If you do proper exercise on that and uh, you will get a better team. The same steps in what? How we are going to select the team? Thousand members are there. You are going to do some physical test, some exercise, you go for walking or running or, or field and all. And those who have the stamina for one hour, you are going to filter out. From 1000, you got the 500. Those who are, have the stamina for one hour to do the exercise on the ground, you are going to select. Continuously one hour, those who have the stamina. You give the competition, running competitions, some other competitions. And from that, you are filtered. Finally, you got 500. Again, you are going to do some another exercise. Then like that, finally you got some 100. And you are going to give training to them. These are the selected candidates. Earlier, all are random. And you are filtered, filtered, filtered with the based on some techniques. Finally, you got the 100. These 100 are possible solutions for you. Possible solutions. Then in that, you are giving some training. Do this way. Do that way. Like you are giving some training with the, with the coach, then what happened is quality is going to be changes. Is it based on the training, based on the inputs, is way of style, is a way of uh, batting, a way of bowling. Everything is going to be changes. Then after four or five uh, stages, and you, you are going to select 50 members from 100. Then from 50, uh, 20. Then those 20 are reserved for the final team. So you are doing so systematically and finally you got the team. And in, the, in that process, uh, you are changing the thing. Sometimes people will come. Then again, you have to fine tuning, again changing, again changing. So the same thing is going to be happening here. So you got the chromosome construction and in, initial population, maybe 100, 20, 30, some value. And evaluate the fitness function. Just now I, I gave one example, cricket exam. Evaluate the fitness. You take this, all these members and you apply to your function and see that. Say for example, I have a function x square plus y square plus z square is equal to something. And I substituted and it has to satisfy. You substitute 0, 1, 2. So it is not satisfied. Then you discard that. Then another set of the values, another set of values. At one, one moment, you got the result. So you take the each and every population, all are solutions, possible solutions. All are possible solutions. And what is the solution? I don't know uh, until uh, unless you have to examine that. You take the candidate and uh, perform the function. Then see the results. If they are satisfied, you accept it. Otherwise, you have to. So how you are going to satisfy based on the fitness? So evaluate the fitness. Say so you, you want to uh, complete the project. Then you need some students to do the thing. You are going to ask questions. You are going to feel. 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 You are
Tell me. Sir, voice is breaking, sir. Okay, I, I'll, I'll speak out a little bit louder. Uh, so that will be good. See, uh, initially got the 20 candidates. All 20 are possible solutions. But how to select two members from the 20? How to select them? Sir? Excuse Madam. me, sir. Ma'am, actually, due to poor network connectivity, sir left the meeting, madam. Uh, so, uh, can you make a phone call uh, to him so that uh, he, he may join again? Kaushik, sir? Sure, madam. Okay. I will, ma'am. Okay. Participants, please kindly hold on. Due to network issues, sir will be coming back. Please hold on. Participants, kindly hold on. Sir will be coming. Dear participants, please kindly hold on for a few minutes. There is a small technical issues and poor network connectivity. We will revert you soon. Dear participants, we will send the attendance come feedback link soon. Please hold on for a few more minutes. Dear participants, please kindly hold on for a few more minutes. We regret for the inconvenience caused. There is a small technical issue.
dear participants due to technical issues uh, network connectivity i think uh, sir has uh, is uh, busy and he is checking that it seems um, regarding that optimization technique what sir has told uh, in his uh, the same way how he has given the example exactly in uh, family if four children are there the parents may uh, making them to brought up in a same position same environment but the problems what the children are going to face that may be different so the parents may not uh, give the solution for each and every problem instead of that they'll be giving the guidance how to take up the situation and how to make it in a correct manner in that way the optimization technique your problem the basic the technical uh, problem the survey what is our challenges that may be different and what is the objective what may be the goal what we want to achieve that may be different so how to make it on taking the literature on taking the survey about these algorithm and the way you are supposed to find out which algorithm or which method may be suitable in order to get the solution so that may be the optimization sir has rightly pointed out in the beginning itself regarding the introduction that is the motivation how to take the optimization technique in that way sir has given the very clear idea what is the way we have to take it and then regarding the uh, parameters what sir has told means you are going to take up this kind of the convergence and the convergence rate and then you are going to see about the cost so whenever you are going to see the convergence you are taking lot time but even then the convergence is not occurred means you are not going to be a very good thing so the rate also we have to see and the cost behind this one that is also to be monitored that was the one sir has uh, given it very fantastically in his uh, result uh, point of view the graph was very uh, shown very clearly uh, how many iteration you have to have it the errors maybe initially it may be high but after so many iterations the errors are going to be minimized so that the convergence is coming to the point so the convergence rate is also very important and the cost of this kind of uh, the optimization technique that is also going to be taken into consideration so sir has rightly pointed about even this way also and after that sir has explained regarding the lms algorithm which is the way you have to take it regarding the step size so how to get the convergence whether it is going to be in a very fast manner or whether it, you are going to have the largest step or in which manner you are going to make it in that way you have to apply these concepts and then sir has taken the next one regarding the genetic side genetic algorithm so how to take up all these points that was the one sir was giving the example with the cricket uh, team uh, how you are going to have the open the selection and uh, in the broad one how you are going to narrow down and from the people of 100 how you are going to make it as 50 and from 50 how you are going to select it 20 in that way sir was giving the excellent uh, information regarding the optimization technique really it is a very wonderful thing sir has given us sir is uh, uh, having more information and uh, regarding all the algorithms optimization algorithm bat algorithm butterfly algorithm uh, all these things he have given it in a very elaborate manner uh, but as sir has rightly pointed out the parents may not be going behind each and every child to say this is a situation in this way you have to go spoon feeding may not be helpful for long run we have to analyze once we have uh, studied about these algorithm we have to sort it out what may be the pro algorithm or what are the changes we can do it in this algorithm which may suits well for our reality for our purpose in that way sir has rightly uh, given the introduction also the motivation all those things sir has given it in a very elaborate manner so i think uh, in the meantime uh, the technical issue would have been solved
So please hold on. Kaushik, sir. Ma'am, just a few minutes, madam. Yes. Just a minute, madam. OK, sir. Sir has taking all these uh, lectures with uh, great patience and uh, with a very knowledge sharing manner. Sir has taken it in a very wonderful manner. So sh sir is uh, sharing his uh, precious time also with us. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful time, uh, wonderful lecture and the how much you are sparing your time with us, sir. Sir, Malachami, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, could you please wait? Uh, due to technical glitches, sir has gone out. Sir will be coming and continuing the lecture, and then we'll be giving all these things, sir. Sure. Sir? Yes, sir. Sir, Kaushik, sir. Madam. Yes, sir. The technical issues was resolved, madam. Sir is uh, on the way, ma'am. Please wait for a few minutes, madam. Okay, you sir. You to join now, madam. Okay, sir. Dear participants, the resource person will join within a moment. Please hold on. Kindly bear with these kind of technical glitches which is happening. Dear participants, please kindly hold on for a few minutes. Our resource person will join within a few minutes. Please kindly hold on. I will share the feedback come utterance within a few minutes. Please be patient. Thanks for understanding. Thank you. Dear participants, kindly wait for a few more minutes. Sir is on his way. He'll join it within a minute. Kindly spare few more minutes. Sir is going to join. Kindly wait for a minute.
as sir has rightly pointed out whenever we are going to have the optimization uh, what is the parameter that we have to take it that one is a foremost criteria we have to take it and that must be uh, the objective of that one is to fulfill that criteria so in that way the algorithm must be taken so when we are going to take that kind of algorithm we have to change some kind of the the steps what we are going to have it that may be the step size or the weights or uh, which one is going to give us the prominent solution for our problem in that way we have to modify the existing one and that modified algorithm can be named by the the research uh, scholar name itself and in that way you can give the name of that algorithm as a new algorithm novel algorithm and in that way you can proceed so that may be the new optimization technique the novelty will be coming only in that way so what is the problem we are going to face it what is the objective of our research based on that only we are going to introduce a novelty that was the sir's idea he was uh, giving us in a very wonderful manner and uh, he has listed out so many algorithms if you are going to lead, uh, read all those things in a literature if you are going to read all these algorithm that itself will be giving it a very wonderful insight about the optimization technique and in that way we are going to make it a very uh, optimized that is the solution is supposed to be the acceptable one and that is something called as the optimization Dear participants, based on your request, here I shared the attendance come feedback link for today's session. I request you to all kindly fill the attendance come feedback and retain here for just five more minutes. Our resource person will join. I request to all the participants, please kindly retain here for a few more minutes. I shared yeah. the attendance come feedback link for your kind pursuit. Thank you for understanding. Thank you. Dear participants, after filling that attendance and feedback, kindly hold on for a few more minutes. Sir will be joining soon. Dear participants, sorry for the inconvenience. Kindly hold on.
Yes, uh, dear participants, uh, based on your request, uh, we are giving, uh, we are going to give the formal, uh, the information regarding the vote of thanks for sir. Sir has uh, give, delivered a wonderful lecture. Really, I am very thankful on behalf of Sarnathan College of Engineering Management, our beloved principal, Hachodi, Department of ECE and the program convener Dr. V. Mohan sir and the coordinators Mr. V. Kaushik sir and Mr. S. D. Sairam sir on behalf of them really I want to thank for sharing his knowledge and the valuable time sir uh, now the formal order of thanks has been going to be delivered by our beloved professor Mr. K. Malaychami sir of EC department sir now the forum thank is given to you sir Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. A. Professor Rao, Associate Professor, Department of PCE, NIT Warangal, who is in our midst today. This session, optimization techniques in antenna systems and also 5G, 6G communication futures, list of some optimization algorithms, beam forming, smart antennas, applications of beam beam forming technology, antenna parameters, smart antenna systems, linear array, LMS algorithm by him. is an eye opener for us. Thank you once again, sir, for your stimulating session. I thank wholeheartedly uh, the management, our principal, for leading, uh, leading us this opportunity. During these days, these days. Once again, I thank the entire ECE team attended by our madam for the successful session in all these days. I thank all the participants for your presence and the enthusiastic interactions in all the sessions. You all have made this FTP an interesting and memorable event. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your word of thanks. And uh, instruction to the participants, tomorrow, the day five, the first session is going to be handled by